Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. We are going to go through uh, starting up your cistern pump for the first time. Uh, this is for a Franklin C1 cistern pump or Springer series uh, half horsepower or one horsepower cistern pump. Um, this, is, this is a brand new system. Um, just got done installing it and we're going through the step-by-step -step procedure to start up the, the pump. First thing you want to do before you even turn on the power supply is you're, you're probably going to remove the cover from the pressure switch. This is the pressure switch right here. This is where all your electrical connections run through. This pressure switch is what turns the pump on and off based on the water pressure inside the tank. So at a certain high point, in this case 60 pounds, the pump will, this switch will disconnect the circuit. And once the pressure starts to drop again, once you start using water inside the house and it reaches 40 pounds, the, the, uh, the tension on the spring will engage the switch again to, to turn the power on to the pump. So everything, all the power supply goes from the breaker panel to the pressure switch and then out to the tank, out to the cistern pump. But before we begin, we are going to crack this valve open. This is a boiler drain. Um, this is going to be our air release because this is a new system. This whole plumbing line going all the way back to the cistern is full of air. So we want to make sure to purge that um, so that there's no air lock in the, in the pump system. Next step is going to be to energize the circuit for the pump. The, the pump should be on a dedicated circuit, uh, and oddly enough, it's a non-GFI protected circuit because it's in a water tank. Well pumps and cistern pumps shouldn't be on a GFI circuit, but uh, you want to check your local electrical code uh, to verify that. But we're energizing the cistern pump circuit, and then we're going to go back over here. We're going to go back over here and wait, and at this point we should be able to hear air rushing through the boiler drain, um, and we'll let that air keep rushing until water starts spurting, and then we'll close this off. Now, the pump is not working. Um, it's, not, it's not going, water's not going through, so we have several other things to check to make sure uh, the installation was done correctly. The first thing we're going to do is verify that we're going to look at the voltage on the pump. We do have both 115 volt and 230 volt pumps. This particular pump is 115 volts, plus or minus 10%. So we're going to measure the voltage with a multimeter to make sure that we have 120 volts coming in to the pressure switch from the panel, which is going to be this leg right here. And we don't. So we're gonna we're gonna check the electrical connection and try again. So we tightened up some electrical uh, connections, and we intentionally um, did several steps to kind of sabotage this, so we could go through the step by step process. So we tightened up the electrical connections. We're gonna measure the voltage now with the multimeter to make sure we have 115 volts plus or minus 10 percent, which we do. We have 120 volts. Now that's coming from the breaker panel, and then this, this uh, uh, switch right here is going to transfer that voltage out to the cistern pump, so we need to check that side of the switch as well to make sure it's not a problem with our switch. And there again, we have 120 volts. So we're getting power going outside, so the power connection is good. So next we're going to go outside and check things out. Up. Okay, so now we're at the cistern it itself. This is a new installation, um, and as is common with all new installations, there's been a fair amount of settling that's occurred, uh, and, and uh, settling can do a few things. First of all, we have a junction box here where the power is pulled from the house and is, is uh, wired to the power coming out of the cistern pump, the, the leads. So when it settles, when the ground settles like this, it will pull on this conduit and it can pull the, the wire down. Um, so we wanna open this junction box and make sure all those wire nuts are secured and the, and the junction and the, and the uh, splices are secured in this junction box. We also wanna listen for the pump motor inside the cistern. 
In this case, I can hear the pump motor humming, but since it's not transferring water into the, into the house, what's likely happening is either the intake is blocked or more likely there's an airlock in the system, which often occurs when first starting up. Okay, so uh, again, we're gonna uh, not only wanna take this, when, when we see this settling occur, we're not, not only gonna wanna take this cover off of this LB um, to check the wire connections, but it would also be a good idea if we don't hear the pump motor running in the cistern, it'd be a good idea to take those wire nuts off and check the voltage with our multimeter there as well. So you wanna take them off with the power off, carefully separate them, and then turn the power back on and check the voltage to make sure that there was no cut in the wire between the house and the cistern. So if you have voltage here, then we know it's getting into the cistern. Um, but again, if you hear the motor running, you're, you, you don't have to check these things because um, uh, you know that power is getting to the, the pump. So the next thing to do is to peek inside the cistern. We already have this, uh, this is our pitless adapter tool, um, but we're gonna peek inside the cistern and we're gonna look for that orange ball. That orange ball, um, we wanna make sure that we don't see anything floating above the water other than that orange ball. And I'm gonna pull this pump out. We already had this hooked up, and disconnected from our pitless adapter. I'm going to show you the anatomy of this pump so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So, we want to make sure, we want to make sure that this this plastic intake screen is not floating above the water, that it's fully submerged underwater, because of course this is where water is gonna be drawn into the cistern through this intake screen. So if, it's, if this somehow got disconnected from the orange ball, the float ball, and this was floating up above the water, or it got hung up on something and it's floating above the water, it's gonna to try to suck air and it's not gonna be able to draw water. So we wanna just do a visual inspection Make sure that, that this intake screen is fully below water. We also want to make sure, um, and we go over this in our step-by-step -step video on how to install this floating intake sleeve to the, the cistern pump. But we want to just double check to make sure that this intake screen is threaded directly to the hose. Um, when you get this, it comes with a small plastic check valve in there we want to remove that check valve because we don't want any potential for air to be locked between that check valve and the intake of the pump. So we just did a visual inspection. If it's, if it's open, that's perfect. We're going to thread this intake screen back on. The other thing that we're going to check is to make sure that this float switch is upwards. This is our normally open float switch that will turn the pump off during low level scenarios. But if this gets hung up on something and is pointed down, it's not gonna allow power to get to the pump. So we wanna make sure that this float switch is, is facing up um, on the pump. And again, if you hear the pump motor, you know that power is getting to the pump. So it's probably not the float switch. And in this case, we, did, we went through all of our checklist. We know we're getting 120 volts at the pump. So the final step that we're gonna do is make sure we get rid of that airlock. And to do that, we're gonna suspend this pump. I'm gonna hook up our pitless adapter tool. I'm gonna thread it onto here. This is what allows us to quickly pull the pump out of the cistern and put it back in without having to get in the tank. It's a very useful, useful device. It's very hard to thread it in when you're trying to do an instructional video uh, <laughs> and do it with just two hands. But I got it in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna submerge this pump, make sure we see the float, the float switch point up, which we did. 
We're gonna make sure that that intake goes below the water, which it did. And I'm just gonna hold it in this position uh, so that I can see water shoot out. And we're gonna turn the power back onto the pump. And as soon as we do that, we're gonna see water shoot out of there. That's gonna get rid of the airlock in the system. So as soon as we see water shooting out of there, let it run for a few seconds, turn the pump back off, connect it back to the pitless, and we'll have water inside the house at that point. Here I am holding the pitless um, so that I can see that, holding the pump up by the pitless so I can see the water line fitting. Clint is gonna go over to the disconnect switch right there, flip that circuit on. And just like that, we see water shooting out. That cleared the airlock. So I'm gonna have him turn that off. That, we know that the airlock is cleared. So we're gonna put this back in the pit list, get it seated, and then we're gonna run that pressure test again inside the house. I'm using this pitless adapter tool to get the pump seated back in. We want to make sure that there's no wires in the way. Wiggle it down and in place. Make sure it's nice and seated. And then we'll unthread this tool and go test it. Okay, so now that we purged the air out of that pump and hooked it back up to the water line, we're gonna go back in here and re restart everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is crack this valve so air can escape. We're gonna go over here to the panel, turn the circuit on for the pump, and then we're gonna listen for air. You can hear that whistling there. The air's escaping. I can feel the air coming out so we know water's on its way. We're gonna watch this needle on the pressure gauge. Watch it build, I can hear water coming. And right now we're gonna shut that off. And that was just, that was an initial short cycle on the, on the pressure switch uh, because that bladder has to expand um, once it's, it's brand new. So it has to pop open and uh, so it just short cycle. But you can see the pressure building. Uh, it's gonna shut off at 60 pounds. Now, if the water doesn't shut off at 60 pounds, if it, if it just continues to run and won't, won't build enough pressure, then the, that's a telltale sign that you, you need to double check your voltage. Make sure you know the voltage of your pump and that it corresponds with the voltage coming to the, from the breaker to the pressure switch. If you have the wrong voltage, it'll only run half the pump and you will never be able to build pressure. So, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to stand here until the pressure shuts off at 60 pounds. And uh, you'll hear a click on the pressure switch and then you're, you're good to go. The last thing I'll mention is that once you have everything pressurized, turn off the power, turn off your, um, your closest isolation valve and watch the needle on this pressure gauge. This is gonna tell you if there's a leak down or upstream of this valve right here, back to the cistern. If there is a leak, you'll see this needle slowly start to drop. That means water's dripping out somewhere. This pressure's holding right there. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on it, make sure it holds. But this pressure gauge is the best diagnostic tool for your plumbing system. Now, there is a, a chance that um, your pump may not be building pressure. As soon as you turn the, the electric off for it, that needle drops down to zero. You've checked all your plumbing um, and there's no leaks. There is a check valve built into the top of that, of both the Franklin C1 and the Springer Series cistern pump. Um, and that check valve, if it, it could get stuck open, it will drain all the pressure back to the tank. So you wanna just, use this pressure gauge to tell what's happening with your system.